Okay, this video is going to be um, servo control 3.5. Um, I've already done three uh, servo control uh, video three, so I wanted to kind of add on to it instead of just making this four. I wanted to kind of you know go over the uh, instructions, the bits, um, how things are done, and why I've done things the way I did them. Essentially, this is the same exact program. Um, I did change the names of the routines, axis one servo controls, axis two servo controls, and axis three servo controls. Uh, axis one, um, essentially we, we had, uh, in video three, I had these at uh, servo controls and that's it. So I want to kind of just individualize them. Um, so essentially, if I hit the reset button, now in, in this state, we're, at, we're in the current state of the machine, we're at we just downloaded uh, so we're still using our virtual chassis still using our virtual axis um, it is in a shutdown shutdown state so uh, at this point if we monitor the axis properties we can see that the shutdown state we're using is, is high so what we want to do is hit the reset and then that the motion axis shutdown reset occurs it's done when the motion uh, motion axis one shutdown status is not high and there is no faults then it will go to, to from uh, state one and transition the machine into state one now if we home it, as you see on our, our attributes here, our, our servo attributes, the actual position is 1003. So if we home it, if you remember our homing to this is done at 100, a position of 100 uh, position units. So if I home it, it should go to 100. And it does so at that point when the so when I initiated the uh, put home push button the enable happened the instruction went done there was no errors uh, in process happened process complete happened and when the process complete went high it transitioned to uh, into state 2 now in state 2 what I do is I wait to the motion move push button is pushed and in the motion axis move you have uh, the enable you have a done or an EN, a DN, a ER, an IP, a PC now an EN is the enable the DN is the done uh, ER is the error the instruction errors uh, the IP is the end process PC is the process complete. Now we use the process complete to know that the, the uh, servo did exactly what the instruction told it to do before we go to state three. Um, in that you have a position of 500. Uh, we're choosing to use a move type of zero. So if we went to instruction help, you could tell why we went to, to use an instruction type of zero. So in the move type, um, you want to do an absolute move, which would be zero. If you do an incremental move, that would be one. If you did the rotary shortest path, which it could go forward or backwards to the shortest path, you would pick two. If you did a rotary positive, it would just go to the positive until it rolled around back to a position of 100 or 500 I'm sorry because we're choosing to go to 500 if we chose to go a negative it would go negative until it went to 500 um, and then an absolute master offset and an incremental offset so in our illustrations we chose to use a absolute which is the, the move type the position we're moving to a position unit of 500 um, the speed we're, we're continuing to use at, at 10 units per second. Um, the acceleration rate is at 200, 200, 
and we're using a trapezoid. So to back to the instruction help, the trapezoid, reason I like to use the trapezoid is you get to the position standstill a lot quicker. Um, so when you hit the position standstill, a lot of times you can assume that's a safe state. Uh, there's no movement. Um, you know, in case you had to enter the, the, the zone or enter the, the machine at that point. But to explain this a little bit more, we have 200 and 200. So we're choosing to go 200 up. And, and up here would be the standstill and then 200 down. So it's not necessarily the standstill. That's running at, at the command. When it comes back down here, it would hit the standstill. Now, at 200 and 200, you would look evenly symmetrical. This is not evenly symmetrical. This is probably like a 200 and then like a 300 or, or something of that nature. Um, it's just an illustration to have on instruction help. Now, if you choose to use an S curve, then you would have to have your tuning a little bit tighter and understand exactly what the properties are as far as you know starting and stopping to when you get to full speed. So this would be the acceleration to full speed and the decel to zero speed. So if you look at this is zero to speed, speed to zero, and that's on both of them. Now with that said we you know we have a trapezoid at, at D, a, XL decel of 200, uh, XL jerk and decel jerk at, at 100. We're not using the merge. Uh, we still set it at program, but we use a position lock of zero and lock direction is none. Um, this is basically disabling this feature. And it's only on newer features, so our newer programs, so you, you shouldn't see this on an older version. So if I were to uh, push the button for the, the motion position move, then the motion is commanded. It's not it enabled real quick. You didn't see that. Uh, the DN is done because the instruction is done act, um, executing. The speed is currently. You see the the velocity is currently at ten. The motion or the axis is moving. And when it hits, so it's in process at this point. So it's doing the task that you're telling it to do with the MAM your motion axis moving it to a position of 500. When it hits 500, it would go process complete. Just like it is just now. So then the process complete happened. It transitioned states to state three. Now if we would have chose to use a IP for our, our state transition, then our state transition would have uh, actually transitioned to a different state uh, before the, the move or before the instruction was done. So in other words, before the servo actually physically did what it was supposed to do. So let's cut this off. And if we go down to state three. And state three, in state three we have a motion axis job. Uh, similar to what's going on with the MAM, the motion axis jog has a enable a DN, which is done, an ER, which is an error, in case the instruction errors, an IP. It does not have a process complete because it, has, it actually doesn't know a position to go to. It just knows to do the, the function that you're telling it to do, which again, we're choosing it to go to uh, a direction of zero, which is, if we look at the uh, instruction, The direction of zero is forward. Um, the direction of one is reverse. And again, we had the same thing, a trapezoidal move. So if I actuate this, the, the servo will continue to move. Uh, it has no destination, so it will just move as long as the servo or the, the jog axis button is pushed. And then you indicate that you want to transition states to state four off the IP, the in process. So 
if we look at that, the virtual axis one actual position is moving, it's in a acceleration of 10, and it's doing a task as long as we're holding the jog button down. As soon as we stop holding the jog button down, our motion axis stop. So if I untoggle this, the motion axis would stop, and the process complete would happen on that. Now, the motion axis stop actually has a process complete. The same set of bits, so an EN, a DN, an ER, an IP, a PC. Process complete is what you want to use to transition that it is at a stop state. So the instruction did do exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, we're using a jog type, so if you did instruction help, you can you can actually change what type of stop you want to do. If you wanted to do an, an all, like stop all functions, uh, you can do a zero. Um, we're choosing to use a one, so we're at a jog. Uh, you could do a move, you could do a gear, a home, a tune, test, cam, position cam. I mean, you can keep changing all of these. So that's why they, there's so many of them, that's why they give you an option to just stop everything, uh, putting in a zero. I chose to, uh, being that I'm doing a jog, I choose to stop my jog and the same functionality. So now at this point, we want to take it back to a state of three because if we want to continue jogging it, we can. So we can pick right back up by hitting the jog button. The motion axis starts and it starts jogging. So at that point, that explains those two instructions. Now at the very bottom, we chose to have a motion shutdown button. Now the motion shutdown button will, it will shut down the axis. And then the, when the axis shuts down, you don't transition it from a bit necessarily from the instruction, you transition it from the axis bit to say that uh, the instruction status is actually shut down. So the servo did shut down. So if I toggle this, the enable happened, the done happened, and you've seen the servo shutdown status actually happen. So then it moved a zero into the state. At that point, come back up in here, we come back up to the reset, we can reset it, do the whole function again. real quick just just a run through you see it's going to move <coughs> so at, at, at uh, state 2 it's going to move to 500 and when it moves to 500 then it will go to a process complete and then when process complete it goes to a point where you can jog it so if I hit the jog button right now essentially it won't do anything I'm, the, my state is not as equal to a state of 3. So as soon as this hits 500, then it will go process complete. So state of 3. Now we're stopped, but we can hit a state of jog. So we're jogging it. And as we're jogging it, we can choose to stop it. And we chose to stop it. And then Again, you just come down here and you can shut down your motion act, your your servo by doing a motion axis shutdown. So real quick, I just wanted to go over about what why I did some of the things I did on the um, the, the video three and to explain the actual uh, instructions and the bits pertaining to what what they do. So with that, we'll continue to the video four and. Uh, Anyway, I thank you for uh, watching the video, and subscribe if you like, and thank you.